Let's bring in Macro Business co-founder Leith Van Onsler now to talk about the inflation data today. Welcome, Leith. Look, you might have just heard Andrew Charlton there say that he thinks uh, the inflation data today that's come in at around 6% might give the RBA reason to pause on rates for a while. What's your view? Look, I think the RBA certainly should pause. They've obviously done an incredible amount of monetary tightening in a very short period of time. They've raised the official cash rate by 4% since May last year. Um, and also, obviously, inflation is falling. Um, there is one problem, though. Australia's services inflation is, is still rising. So that's, that's basically all the stuff we don't import. And it's rising because we've got very high energy prices, uh, you know, fast rising energy prices, and also uh, quickly rising rents. And what I think might actually happen is the RBA um, may hike next week purely because Governor Phil Lowe only has two more meetings in his term. And they might want to get the bad news out of the way tactically while he's still the governor so that when Michelle Bullock takes over in October, the interest rate peak will be in, then, then Michelle Bullock can cut and she'll be the hero. So I think they might do one more, uh, even though I think the data suggests they probably shouldn't, especially because we have about half a million fixed rate mortgages still to reset this year, going from rates of 2% to 7%. So there is quite a lot of monetary tightening built into the system already. But I think purely for the fact that, uh, you know, Michelle Bullock is going to come on board in a few months, they might try and get one more in there just so all the bad news is out of the way. But would Philip Lowe be that generous to, you know, bear the brunt of all of these rate rises um, and allow Michelle Bullock to, to start afresh? Well, well uh, obviously, Phil Lowe doesn't make the decision on his own. It's, it, it is done at the board level. Um, I think, I think uh, you know, tactically, it makes sense to sort of this, this good cop, bad cop regime. Phil Lowe, he, he's leaving anyway. Uh, he can basically, you know, deliver the, deliver the medicine, um, you know, over the next two meetings, whether it's ne uh, next, next week or the one after. I think, I think they will hike one more time because the last thing you want mm. is to not go hard enough and for a new governor to come in and then have to raise interest rates because then everyone yeah. will love it. It starts her term off very badly. So I think they might uh, do one more just to give her an easy run. And what do you think about, um, you know, the, the idea that inflation will get to its target of 2 to 3% by 2025? I mean, we're still sitting at 6%. Uh, do you think it's falling fast enough? And is there something the Labor government should be doing, particularly when it comes to productivity, to, to, to you know, accelerate the rate at which inflation is coming down? I think, I think we are in a bit of a dilemma. So we've got basically what's called a burnout economy. So basically Phil Lowe's got his foot planted heavily on the brake. The RBA's got the, the foot planted heavily on the brake, while the Al Albanese government, government has the foot on the accelerator by running the biggest immigration program in this nation's history. And what that's doing is it's obviously inflating rents at a record pace. And rents are actually the biggest driver of inflation in Australia. So it's the single biggest driver. So this mass immigration program that Labor's running is obviously exacerbating the housing crisis, but it's also putting upward pressure on rents and inflation, which will cause the RBA to obviously keep, keep rates higher for longer. Mm. All right, Lee Van Onslen, thank you very much for joining me. Really appreciate your time as always.